Well, hello there, everybody. I'm Tony Hunter. I'm the Chief Executive here at the Social Care Institute for Excellence, and we're delighted to be hosting this webinar today on carers' breaks. And as I'm looking, the participant numbers are 72 of you at the moment. We've been looking down the list. There's some from Ceredigion, from Hampshire, Plymouth, Worcester. We're also, I hope the weather's a bit better there than it is very hung over here at the moment, really. Um, but um, we're looking for a really good conversation with yourselves, trying to put a, quite a bit of information in, but you know the important thing is the connection with yourself. We'll be looking hard at, at what you're saying on the right-hand side of the screen there, interesting issues that we can pick up and explore with you. Um, we've got uh, an all-star lineup here for you. Um, well, I'm going to ask you to introduce themselves um, in a moment, and that's Ros Routon, who's Director for Care and Transformation at the Department of Health and Social Care. Debbie Hustings, Partnership Manager, Carers for Surrey Heartlands uh, ICS and East Surrey CCG, and Hazel Brown, Head of Carers Services Local Solutions. We used to work together, Hazel, didn't we, 15 we did years ago in Liverpool? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we God's own country. A bit. It hasn't changed a bit, I'm sure it has. Um, okay, so yeah, can I ask you to introduce yourselves and then I'll. Yeah, yeah. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Ros Rout and I'm the Director of Care and Transformation at the Department of Health and Social Care and I'm delighted to be here. I cover adult social care policy for the government and carers is a fundamental part of that, so really pleased to be here today. Debbie. Yes, I'm Debbie Hustings, I'm the NHS Partnership Manager for Carers for Surrey Heartlands Integrated Care System. That actually includes um, colleagues that I work with at the County Council, particularly Ron Critcher, also representing the practice, um, 119 practices, MOD and our provider Surrey Independent Living Council. And last and certainly not least, Hazel. Thanks, Tony. Hello, everyone. I'm Hazel Brown. And as Tony said, I'm Head of Care Services at Local Solutions um, and also Liverpool Care Centre. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit later about one of the ways that we support carers through carers breaks. Okay, so yes, again, you know, it's really, really good to, uh, to, 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 for us all to be here today. We appreciate you can't see us, and we can't see you either, but you can see um, on screen the, uh, the, 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 the material that we're going to be sharing with you, which has said we hope will stimulate a lot of, uh, a lot of conversation. Um, our colleague Iris Steen up there is reminding you to make sure you've got your own audio on and turned up. It looks as if most of you are hearing okay, um, so to check what's happening at your end as well if there are any, if there are any problems. Okay, now it's a real shame that uh, Isaac, uh, an expert by experience as a carer, is not going to be able to be with us today uh, for, for reasons in fact to do with his caring, but we're going to share a few a few, oh, I nearly, got, I nearly got my glass of water over there. That wouldn't have been a good start, would it? Um, a few of his, uh, a few of his comments um, with, that he wanted to uh, share. I'm not doing this very well, am I, James? Our technical right, man, James, here to bail me out as always. Okay, yes, that's the next one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm down there. Okay. Next one. Okay, so why breaks matter? A few carers. Was that pressing the wrong bit there, James? Yes, the little arrow. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man and machine in total harmony here. <laughs> right, you should be able to see Isaac's blog here. And I, I think that's a really powerful statement you can see halfway through or two-thirds way through that side. We just carry on. Mm -hmm. That can be the real experience of carers. And I think together we are trying to, uh, to, uh, to, to tackle. Um, and what an important phrase he shared was that we feel guilty and may be fearful of asking for help. What an awful situation to be in, and we're all nodding here um, at that. And then on the next slide, if I can move it on successfully, we are not aware of the opportunities for breaks until we've reached our capacity to cope with becoming ourselves and our suffering stress. Again, that's quite an indictment on us all. We have to make sure that people who need support are aware of, 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 of uh, how and where and when they can, when they can actually get it. Um, 
And uh, final, I'll share on the next slide, a good break allows an opportunity to recharge our batteries and breathe. And look at that final comment there as well. It's important that the person I care for gets a break from me. Nice touch of humility from Isaac there that he would have shared with you. But yes, um, uh, the good carers uh, support arrangements have benefits both for the person who, who needs the care and support and the carer themselves. So, um, Key messages for providers and commissioners, and again, this is from the uh, this is from the guidance which was launched last month during Cares Week, uh, developed with the Carers UK, in fantastic um, support and leadership from the Department of Health and Social Care, who are determined to uh, um, see the opportunities here for providing uh, more material to enable us all to uh, focus on this important issue. Um, Key findings, breaks are essential for carers, let's, let's remember that underpinning um, importance there. Um, and not enough carers are getting breaks. I mean, what a powerful statement that is that 46% of carers have been unable to take a break in the last five years. I think that's something that we're going to be looking back upon with horror, really, that we were presiding over a system whereby so many people needing help and unable to, uh, unable to get it. Um, okay. Key messages, breaks can be enjoyable. Um, and the importance of co-production there. Um, it's not for us um, in our uh, ivory towers to be making the arrangements, but for developing uh, uh, services and support um, alongside those who uh, are, uh, we, we intend uh, to benefit. Co-production is a vital theme for us uh, here at Social Care Institute for Excellence, making sure full involvement of people in the design, delivery and evaluation of, of services. Think broadly about breaks. I think we're all well away now from that mentality of thinking, here's the service, you take it or leave it. Breaks can come in many, many forms. So let's keep that vitality of, uh, of, of, of what they might actually uh, look for. Okay, so key measures, assess local needs, diverse communities, you know, it's not just about professionals, this is about making connections in line with broader good care and support these days anyway, which enables us to develop a wider range of innovative and imaginative options. Flexible funding as well, there's many, many, many routes to providing support. And personal budgets, it's not only for people who use um, uh, care and support services, but for carers um, as well. So, um, oh, there's another one. Uh, be flexible about timing. Yeah, I mean, what we're doing is working to people's needs, not our own administrative uh, convenience. Um, regular breaks, routine element of carers' assessments, and uh, inf making sure the information is there. Again, we saw from Isaac, didn't we, um, earlier on his slide, how sometimes people only find out about things when they're at the point of crisis. That just cannot, 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 cannot be right. Okay. Right. Um, these are clips from uh, the website. So this is now launched. The material is launched um, on the website. So this clip is from the the Sky website, and this is from the Carers uh, Carers UK uh, uh, website. There's some fantastic videos on here as well. Um, really searching messages and insights. So we really commend that uh, to you as well. Okay, so on that, um, I'm now going to uh, hand over straight to Roz, and uh, we again, you know, Roz and I and uh, Debbie and Hazel want this to be very interactive, so I'm going to be looking down the, well, you, the comments that you're making as we come through, and we may get some conversation going as we go then, Roz. Yeah. So, great, over to you, Roz. Thanks, Tony. So, um, hello, everybody. It's good to be here. What I wanted to do was set this guidance in the kind of wider context of the work that we're doing at, at the department. Um, I will just take the clicker. Sorry. That's right. um, so, um, th this, this guidance has come about um, in part from the Carers Action Plan, and I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. And when this was published, one of the commitments that the government made was that we would fund a project to really look at how we could promote best practice for everybody out there, knowing that people are busy and that people want to try and make a difference in this area. Um, I'm very grateful we commissioned Sky and Carers UK, and, um, and I would like to take the opportunity to thank them for their work and to everybody that has contributed, because I'm sure it's 
it's not the people in the organisations can't do it on their own. As, as Tony said, co-production is at the heart of this. Um, so the Carers Action Plan um, came out back in 2016, I think it was. Um, there was a call for evidence originally, um, a consultation, and um, I think that that's been, you know, still the material from that incredibly useful. I think that we kind of boiled that down to five main themes. So looking at what can we do to help services and systems be working for carers? What can we do around employment and financial well-being? Looking at young carers in particular, and I have to say that we have two young carers sit on the steering group that oversees the Carers Action Plan. And I think, you know, personally for me, it's been one of the best, the sort of biggest insights that we've got is the work that they bring to that very the sort of top table of, of um, the minute that the minister chair, our minister chairs. Um, better recognition and support for carers in the wider community and society. And um, I think, you know, I think England, it's, you know, 5 million and rising, the UK over 6 million. I mean, the, the figures are extraordinary. And, and since I've been doing this job, I, I sort of feel I now know the story of everybody's caring responsibilities. People don't have a big badge necessarily on them saying that they're a carer, but so many people that we, um, we live with and work with um, are carers, and I think that recognising that is going to be really vital uh, going forward. And then the final bit of the Carers Action Plan is around strengthening the research and evidence base. And as I'm sure many of you know where you work, that when you're fighting for resources, getting the research and evidence base is really important. So it's something, uh, actually not just on carers, but more generally, that we're trying to um, you know, make sure we can hold our own alongside some of the, the big, other big research areas. So the action plan was published last year in June 2018. And um, I should say that the care minister, Caroline Dynage, is an, is an absolute passionate advocate of this. And I think there's a video message from her on the website. And I think she will be speaking tomorrow at the State of Caring conference. But I think certainly uh, we, it always does make a difference when you have a minister that cares about caring. So I uh, you know, just want to say thank you to her. We've, one of the key things she's done, I think, having come worked, been a minister in, in I think, three other departments, three department is that she's really helped make bring this more around cross-government action and again when we have the carers action steering group the oversight group um, getting contributions from uh, DWP from thinking about employment uh, from uh, Department for Education and their responsibilities around young people um, it's been really important that we we look at this this isn't just health and social care where government has a role to play. Um, the action plan set out things that we wanted to happen over the next two years, and we will be publishing a progress report of year one uh, pretty soon. I've got the draft with me here. So, um, so we're keen to hold ourselves to account for making things happen. But the Carers Action Plan isn't the total story, and I um, we... <laughs> So we are working on what is the strategic direction for adult social care and in particular the options around funding reform for adult social care. Those of you that follow this will know it's got slightly caught up in some of the politics at the moment um, but we are working very hard now on preparing for an incoming Prime Minister and I'd say that I um, it sounds, might sound, but it's been the last six weeks, I don't think that a week has gone by where adult social care hasn't been on one of the, leading on one of the news stories. And, I mean, it, that's a bad thing because the reason it's leading is because of the problems that adult social care is facing, but it's also, I think, a good thing that it's on the political agenda again, and the fact that all the Tory leadership candidates have, <coughs> most of them, you know, and have you know, have said, been asked to set out their stall on adult social care is important. I say all that because I want to say that carers is at the, you know, is an absolutely vital part of that. And that when we 
when the government is ready to talk about the social care green paper, we will be talking about carers and what can we do as a society to uh, support carers. So um, moving on, what we heard from this, the call for evidence and all of our responses, and I'm sure, I, you know, I hope that this reflects some of the things that you hear locally, um, but I think, you know, carers probably have more contact almost with the health and social care system than virtually, you know, uh, anybody else. They, so they've really highlighted the importance of having their expertise recognised in interaction with those services. And actually, awareness raising and training for health and social care professionals so they can help to identify carers and be proactive in getting information and support. And I know from my own personal experience that actually, without the GP spotting what our family were going through and signposting us, I, you know, this is a few years ago, but it was the GP who actually connected us with the services and support. Uh, that, that really helped us as a family. We also heard in the call for evidence that um, I think that, you know, that carers is this huge general term, but actually the impact of factors like lack of time or lack of understanding, very, it really varies <coughs> how that affects people and the nature of their caring role and are they caring in isolation or care, you know, are they one of a number of, of a family looking after somebody? So I think this importance, I think, to, you know, that's in the guides around the flexibility of services and systems is a, you know, I think it's one of the trickiest things for those of you that are trying to secure or provide those services. It's easy for me to say it's kind of hard to do, but it's, that is the challenge we need to, to, to rise up to. Um, I think this issue about how carers feel, so tired, I think Isaac's blog, you know, those statement, statements I think will, I'm sure will resonate. You know, it's uh, small things can make a difference in those circumstances. So um, really important to reflect that, uh, to uh, kind of reflect that. Um, so the actions we've got in our action plan uh, for care is really, we, really we trying to look at the way in health and care systems support carers. But we have also, I think, gone beyond that in thinking about, you know, and I think that's what we want to develop more is what the rest of government can do in supporting local services. Uh, so we hope those actions will improve awareness, understanding and, and help, help local governments in ensuring carers are able to access the support they need. So I will just um, finish by just a few highlights from the guidance. I mean, there's no replacement <coughs> to actually going and, you know, um, you know, clicking on the, on the site. Um, I think the, it's, the guidance, you know, outlines how, how as commissioners and providers you could expand, improve regular breaks. I think it's important to think about how this can be built into strategic commissioning and market shaping decisions in local government. So thinking about it in the wider strategic context for local government. Um, there's some really good examples in there, so if you click on there, they're really brief and quite di you know, different ways in which pe places around the country, and thank you to any of you that are on the call that have contributed to that, um, but these are the sorts of things that uh, people, carers and families have valued and people have been able to provide locally. Some of them around technology, some of them around things that are going on in the community, some of them about how people have got businesses to help. So lots of ideas in there. Um, there's some films in the guidance. Um, I think uh, in particular, I'd say this stuff, you know, the Carers UK have produced some films with carers talking about their experience. And so that's quite a good way if you need to like talk to your staff or your senior teams, um, you know, if you hopefully if you've got some carers with you that can do that but if not do use this these the this this footage and then finally i just wanted to sort of give a mention to the um carers innovation fund so this is five million pounds we've got set aside um we've done a market engagement exercise recently to get sort of views about how we go about um seeking bids for that what the process will be um, and, and with a kind of aim, I suppose, to, what we want to do is make sure that this is um, this kind of 
minimum effort with maximum impact and that we look at things that have got the potential to be scaled up because I think being able to to work out ways in which we can build a business case for scaling up interventions will be really important. Um, so I um, will finish there um, and look forward to any, any and available for any questions. Okay, uh, thanks very much indeed for that uh, overview, uh, Ros. That's really, really helpful. And I think you make some important points there about you know, it, it's not only about Department of Health and Social Care, it's about cross-government and society more broadly. So we really need to generate between us a real uh, momentum behind uh, support for carers. A couple of things coming through uh, here are uh, comments about lack of referrals for carer services from GPs. I don't know if you've got any comments on that um, at all, or whether you know whether this is something we keep coming back to during the during the hours. The more we can do on that. And uh, Melanie, the importance. Yes, we all agree of um, integration, as you very pointedly put it. Carers don't care who funds what; they just want the service, really. So I don't see anything you want to say on those points at all. Rob. Okay. Well, on GP services, um, I think it's really um, disappointing if that if people are getting that experience around um, you know not getting referrals through GPs and they're sort of very, uh, often incredibly busy and actually it's a way in which it might minimize or not minimize is the wrong word but actually getting people the right kind of support may help stop people coming to see the GP actually in the in the long run mm. um, I think one of the things I know that in the NHS long-term plan is about trying to support general practice with um, social prescribing link workers. That's a term, I think, it's a very medicalised term and so there's lots of issues with the term, but, but accepting that, it, it is actually the idea is that people, um, lots of people that come and see their GP have got a much wider set of social needs and so actually there are others being able to signpost people to those services would be a, a, you know would really help both people getting the care they want and the service they need faster and also make the most of the GP for dealing with more biomedical aspects of, of people's health um, so I think that um, it, it's that will be it's really important that we link the we make the most of that if we want to improve referrals from GP services, I think. On um, carers and funding, uh, completely, yeah, they just want the services. I, one of the things that um, I've got oversight of is the Better Care Fund. Um, again, a term that people have lots of issues with at times. But that is the I, one of the things we just done a review of that. And um, one of, I guess, the, the thing that pretty much most parts of the country have said has been beneficial about that has been about trying to get shared governance around some of the spending. Now, I don't, we don't collect how much of that goes on carers. We have kind of tried to, to stimulate that. We talk about that. And I think perhaps that's something we need to do more of as we go on, because that really ought to be a good source of funding that works across health and social care to support carers and carers' breaks. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Ros. And, yeah, and uh, we're all busy looking at the various comments. Uh, and as often happens in these webinars, you're giving each other um, insights and advice into things that work in your own uh, areas. There's that uh, comment from um, yourself, Shahid, I hope I pronounced your name uh, correctly, about uh, trialing referrals. Um, and in ways that can be done in three clicks and uh, linking in care advocates to GP networks to raise awareness and increase presence, all that as well. So that's, so that's really good. Some of you seem to be having trouble with the Innovation <coughs> Fund portal. That's something we can take away and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and have a look at. Um, there were one or two very detailed uh, questions which have disappeared off the top of the screen. Now I can't. Oh no, 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 it's okay. It's okay, James. Because I think what we'll do is I think if we move over now to uh, 
to Tempe and then on to Hazel. I think you know if you keep these things coming, we can pick up some of that as we as we go. But can I just say I forgot to say at the start, and I apologise. Um, um, you will get um, the recording um, and the slides that we're using this morning. We, we've got all your email addresses. We'll send that to you uh, anyway. And um, that we are able. Ros isn't going to be able to stay for the whole time. Mm. Oh, Ros is going to be able to. Ros, Ros is nodding, and you can't see that, but I can. Um, so, Ros, Ros, we, we are going to. We are able to go until 12:45 if we need to. So, so that's great. Right, so I'm now going to uh, to hand over to uh, to, for, except for all from Miss Rose Thirty. Sorry, it was fine in rehearsal, really. Believe me, believe me. So I'm going to hand over to you now, Debbie. Then, thank you. Um, thank you very much, Tony. Um, first of all, just wanted to come back to some of the things that Roz has been saying. Um, we do in Surrey Heartland follow an integrated approach to supporting carers. And actually, isn't it great that someone from the NHS is sitting in Sea Sky's office to talk about supporting carers? Um, we, we have, I feel over the last five years, been really helped by the work of NHS England's um, commitment to carers program and uh, a very dynamic team who have pulled together a carers toolkit um, and in Heartlands we created a, a carers memorandum of understanding and that's actually reflected in our current um, system ambitions but also in our wider health and wellbeing 10 year plan where carers are front and centre. Um, so, um, I would just um, like to just start with a bit of a history lesson because we've been alluding to that um, during uh, Roz's um, presentation and for many of you who have worked in the care of services for some time now, you will remember that the um, government's national care strategy of 2010, the next steps, there was funding that came down to the PCTs at the time to develop carer break services. Um, and locally in Surrey, um, the PCT I work for was very interested in this and we went about and commissioned with our partners at Surrey County Council um, an adult carers health survey. And we had a tremendous result from this survey, over 2,000 um, responses. And uh, no guessing for what the top priority was for carers. Uh, all the research continues to replicate this, but they want a break from caring. What was interesting was that for many of the carers who responded, um, they said that the portal for that, would they saw their GP as the portal rather than social care. So um, that was actually extremely helpful for us in actually drawing up um, a project plan uh, and our aim was to develop an early intervention and prevention carers break service but through a carers direct payment and some of you will be hearing a bit more about that as the personalisation plans continue. So how did we, we start off? So we had the body of evidence and then we went into um, a co-production phase which Tony was alluding to earlier and is absolutely crucial. So having heard from the carers, we then needed to um, uh, uh, gain traction with our primary care teams. So we have, at the time, we had 125 practices in Surrey um, and two MOD practices. And uh, we did an awful lot of um, meetings, engagement work, surveys to actually um, produce and co-design a way for them to um, uh, roll out GP carer break services. And the key messages were for, really from our practice managers who are pivotal. Um, if I was going to say a top tip, it would be engaging with your, your, with your local practice managers. Um, but what they said was, and they did demonstrate it at the time, that the referral mechanisms to care services were completely unwieldy. Um, I remember one particular one was nine pages, which is uh, ridiculous. Um, and of course, GPs and practice staff don't have time to, to deliver on that. So they said if we kept it simple and we made it easy, um, you know, they would uh, be interested in delivering the program. Now, at the time, EMIS, and I know someone raised a question about EMIS earlier and the three-click solution, that wasn't available to us. So 
the legend that is Ron Critcher, um, who is our tech guru in Surrey, came up with uh, NHS information governance compliant secure online referral mechanism. And it takes less than two minutes for anyone to do. Um, and that, that, so that, that was quite a, a, a quick win for us. So we were then ready then to, to, to pilot it. And we went out in, in December 2011 to pilot it. Now, within the first six months, every single practice in Surrey had joined up. And I think that just shows the traction. Not only that, the two MOD were very fast behind that. And the way we did it, because obviously you'll all appreciate that funds are limited, um, I think at the time the pot was 1.3 million, is we um, used the practice size weighting as a ratio. So that was the methodology behind how we resourced each practice. So the size did matter, the bigger practices did get more breaks and the smaller practices less. Having said that though, all the practices were engaged and have since we launched back in 2011 been engaged year on year and I'm going to show you some uh, statistics on that. Um, very, very quickly though that funding was exhausted. Uh, it provides on average about two and a half thousand breaks. It is not our only care or break service in Surrey but it is one of a, a suite of break services. And um, uh, Ros, you'll be interested to know it's available also to young carers and we monitor that. Um, but what our GPs and practice managers soon um, said to us was we need access to other support services. And Ron and I went away to discuss how we could deliver the universal offer through the GP Carer Breaks prescription. And that was launched at the back of um, the Care Act implementation in April 2015 um, and was subject to an HSJ uh, shortlisting award. So excellent. Um, we did have a spending review in 2016. You will all be aware of the austerity issues. Um, sadly, we had to reduce the value of the direct payment to £300. Nevertheless, that contribution is considered by the caring population in Surrey to be extremely important. And what are we doing now? Well, we are working with colleagues at NHS England to adapt the Care Break Care um, a carer service to support um, the care uh, to support a care and support plan. Okay, Debbie. Before we move on, a couple of uh, questions. Yeah. There. Uh, Melanie's asking about that three hundred pounds yes. figure. Is it is it per break or per yes. annum? Yes. It, it it is per break, and it is one um, one break per annum, but at the GP's discretion. So guidance is that this is a one off um, service. Um, and that is because we consider anyone with ongoing needs should go forward for a carer's assessment and, uh, and have a, a, a proper um, review of their, their care and support needs. This is early intervention and prevention. Okay, and then there's another uh, question there from Nikki about, can you say just a little bit more about the range of, you might be going on to this anyway, but something about the range of services and does it yes. include day and overnight stay? So yes. Uh, Okay, so, um, sorry, I probably wasn't explicit about that. This is a direct payment, so it's a cash payment made to the carer to be used within accordance of direct payment law. Now, in Surrey, we like to be as flexible as possible with our carers because we believe carers know what best suits them. Um, we actually monitor that, Tony, so we know what the breaks money is being used for. 80% of it is used for replacement care, so that is to provide a care worker to come in to the home or, or, or wherever that, that the care need is required and to replace that so the carer can, can go off and do what they need to do and hopefully have a break from caring. But we are flexible and um, we do occasionally have requests for the money to be used towards a contribution for a holiday, which is perfectly acceptable. But we also use it for things like um, providing funding for a laptop. Um, because we know that carers experience social isolation because of their caring role and often social media may be their way of having a break. Um, but we have used it as creatively as possible and 
Uh, initially, when the brake service was launched, I'll be honest with you, Mr. Stephen Pugsley, who is our coordinator at Surrey Independent Living Council, does an amazing job. He used to be on the phone to me almost on a daily basis to test the parameters. Um, but um, over the years now, we, we have been as flexible as we can to carers so long as it's within the legal framework. And I know that there was a question earlier around parent carers. Um, it, this is another area that we monitor because for parent carers, this is um, a really easy way to access a break service where they may not be eligible under social care. Uh, so um, that integrated approach is, is, is very helpful. So um, let's just have a quick look at some of the results. This is last year, so this is 2018-19 results. And as you can see, um, we, we do have traction across our system, um, which is gaining year in, year out. Um, we had uh, 4,571 GP carer prescriptions, and they are out. the GPs are outstripping every other area in healthcare for making referrals. But interestingly, on the back of our GP carer prescriptions, all our other providers in, uh, in the NHS landscape in Surrey Hartlands asked to be included and we then launched a, G, uh, a, a generic care breaks, um, carers prescription service for them to be able to access the support that GPs can for, for carers. So, so those are just some quick results. Um, bear with me while I move us on to the next slide. Um, I think I've mentioned the, what I consider to be the key to the access, absolutely engagement with both carers um, and practice managers essential. Co-design right the way through, having an easy practical referral mechanism. Um, obviously, we do annual funding allocations because practice sizes change over the years and budgets change. We produce a suite of resources including guidance, leaflets for carers and staff training. We use the breaks uh, funding as flexibly we can within legislation. We take a partnership approach um, and, uh, you know, one, one organisation can't do this on their own. You know, it, it is about um, uh, working together the, uh, for, for the, the greater good of carers. And very importantly, we share our results quarterly. They go to all the CCGs. We have six CCGs in Surrey and they get quarterly reports on all care activities, including GP carer breaks, uh, so they know exactly the value. And this year, Year, we are launching um, a pilot with our partners in Hertfordshire and West Yorkshire and Harrogate um, Integrated Care Partnership to test the utility of the Zarit Carer Burden Scale. And that is a metric that measures the impact that the intervention has had. And we're going to be using that. In fact, Surrey Independent Living Council are already using it to, to actually evaluate the impact that the, the service is having. Okay, there's a few interesting comments and questions that are coming through yeah. there. Um, can I firstly say thank um, Iris Steen, who's uh, on very good form <coughs> today. She's uh, our communications consultant. She's actually given you there, you may have seen the link to the NHSE Carers Toolkit, which is probably useful, but also a link through to a lot of information on what's actually happening um, in Surrey. But there are some specific questions there, Debbie, as well, mm. about uh, um, you know, what, what population sizing in Surrey yes. actually, and how much um, has been spent on uh, 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 how much per annum is spent on three hundred pounds carers breaks by direct payments? You may or may not know that. Yes, I, I, I do. I do know that. Um, and uh, we are currently using um, NHS uh, funding through the Better Care Fund um, at a, a value of just under eight hundred thousand pounds a year. Um, so that does include the cost to contract with our provider to administer the, the program. So um, that's for Dan. Um, and we can share, um, Dan, any of that information. But interestingly, some of you will be aware Carers UK, just before Christmas, had a freedom of information request on um, the uh, carer breaks funding, so um, I'm sure we could get a bit more of a breakdown nationally 
on what um, uh, health authorities are spending on on breaks through through that analysis. I'm not sure if that's published yet, Tony, but um, they certainly um, they certainly did a request uh, a freedom of information for that. Mm. Okay, and there's the, the perennial question that, mm. you know, we all work within a tight financial yes. climate in our different organisations. Really searching question from Melanie there about return on investment calculations, you know, yes. how, you, how you satisfy your treasurers and directors uh, of finance and so oh on. Gosh, it, Melanie, it's, it's the hardest thing, isn't it? How do you measure prevention? And we, we do do health economics in Surrey. Um, we uh, do the, use the Baker Tilly social return on investment, which looks at um, uh, an equation that for every one pound spent on supporting carers, there's a net return of four pounds. But there is also the um, impact assessment that was done when the care bill was being developed. And I think it Tony, you may be able to um, uh, give me the exact figure, but I think it was £7.88, looking around the room. Anyway, I think it was £7.88. Melanie, if you look on the Surrey Carers Joint Strategic Needs Assessment, if you Google that, I know it's in there, but I, I think the social, the, the social return was, um, as I say, for £7.88 um, for every £1 spent. And I would just also add that in terms of looking at the sort of the, the wide assistance analysis, we, we do have as part of our carers prescription um, services um, evidence that some of our interventions are reducing things like carer depression by 25%. So you can actually formulate some methodology, some calculation behind that in terms of um, uh, cash savings on it, uh, other interventions. So things like IAP, access to IAP services, talking therapy, sorry, I, I went into acronyms then, um, uh, but also GP um, time spent looking after um, carers. So. Okay, great. Well, the, the slide that's up there um, at the moment um, has, has contacts and um, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, Iris Steen has kindly um, put on uh, uh, on the right hand side the, uh, the, the the link to the a lot of information about what's happening in uh, in Surrey. So that's so that's so that's great. You're also uh, engaging questions about the role of assessments, who carries out assessments, and. Uh, uh, use of budgets and so on, which we may or may not have time to get in this afternoon, but, you know, I know, and, De and Debbie's uh, nodding away, you know, do make contact with Surrey and ask questions and have a look at that website. So I think now we ought to be moving on to uh, to Hazel, who's got a big grin on her face, I don't know why, uh, she's going to entertain us, I think, so, Hazel. Well, not with this voice, because I've just come back on a plane and I think I've picked up the lurgy from the plane, so oh dear. do um, forgive me. Hazel's picked up a lurgy, and, so, uh, and so she's going to be speaking as clearly as she can. I can do, and Envy could see us now, we're passing this computer mouse about, and as we're down in London we should see it's like Wimbledon, but hopefully it'll be like Johanna Quantum gets a good win today. Thank you, for in, <laughs> thank you for inviting me down, and I'm really, really pleased that my time has been included in the guidance. Um, I've been working in Liverpool Care Centre for 22 years now. Um, and one of our services is commissioned by the City Council and it is Care's Assessments. I know we spoke earlier about Care's Assessments. Now I'm just, similarly this mouse is going to be the person who takes the lead in all these presentations. Now I've got to click this, I'm just getting it off. There we go. Yes. Um, so I'm going to press this on and it's my time. So we are really pleased to be involved um, in the guidance. And you say, well, what is my time? Well, we're commissioned by the City Council um, as trusted assessors, and we actually complete, and I know you mentioned it earlier, Tony, about carers' assessments and support plans. So we are in a good position that we do carers' assessments, so we can ask carers what kind of support do they need to help them in their caring role. And the biggest thing that we found that came back in Liverpool was respite. So we looked at it, and in the economic climate, we hold our hands up and say, respite is getting harder and harder to come by. Oh, now I've gone completely off it. So I'm going to have to say, please, can you come and rescue me here? Thank you very much. Let's let's try this again. I told you I was last. There's a reason why I was last. <laughs> right. So we've got repeated, repeated requests for respite. Um, it was getting harder, so we had to think outside the box. 
we wanted something that could work for both carers accessing it and also the support that was being offered to them. And we wanted to show something a partnership at its finest. And I think that's a bit of the wow factor with what we've developed. We went to the private sector, we went to the hoteliers, we went to theatres, and initially it was hoteliers. And we went to them and we said, could you help us out? Could you give us an overnight complimentary, now complimentary is the massive word here, um, break for a carer and a guest? And the first person that we spoke to was a carer and she got it. She was caring for her mum and her daughter, so we could say she was a signage carer, but she got it. So she got me in front of the general manager and sat, and I sat there until um, he said yes. <laughs> Um, and that was the start of it, and then it just progressed and progressed, um, and still we did this with no funding whatsoever. Um, and when we got to 12, it sat on the side of my desk, and I got to 12 hotels offering me on a monthly basis complimentary breaks for a carer and a guest. I thought, I need to look at money, I need to get somebody else to do this. So I went to the lottery and I managed to secure lottery funding for three years. Let me just see it now. Fingers crossed everybody, this is going to work, yeah. right? Yeah. The other one, right. Yes. Right. So I got funding and I managed to employ a post and a half. So in the first year of the lottery funding, this is just to show you a sort of a range of opportunities that carers could have. First of all, we did it with the hoteliers and then carers came back to us and said, this is great, but I can't leave the person I care for overnight. I cannot get away. So fine. And again, that's going back to what Isaac was saying. It has to be something tailored to what they want. So then we went to the theatres. We went to restaurants. We went to, we could just take a couple of hours out. And the response was phenomenal. My time wouldn't work without like the private sector, without all that happening. It just would not work. And they could not be happier to be involved. And they just wanted to be asked. And the hotels all go above and beyond. Um, you can see the difference from a thousand to three thousand in years two. It says fifty-four. We've now got over sixty odd organisations. Um, one of the wild ones was a recent was a restaurant who was opening its doors. So it decided it was going to practice on us, and it gave us three hundred meals over two days. It was almost like it was opening on the Friday, so on the Tuesday and the Wednesday, it was like, let's see if how everything works. It was abs it was brilliant, and it's so, so simple. Um, Yvonne Roberts, who is um, a journalist and writes in The Guardian, she called it like frugal innovation. She said it was small changes employing familiar ingredients, costing comparatively little that can make a big difference in surprising ways. And I think that's the success of my time. You can see the difference. A gym masterclass, now people might go, a gym masterclass? But those carers didn't know each other. They came, they had something to eat. Yes, they had the gym masterclass, but they went away getting that peer support, and that's the big difference. The musical event, I referred to Tony as well, the Cavern Club in Liverpool, you know, it's iconic. And I have to say, I am the only person who stood on the same stage as Paul McCartney, who can't sing. <laughs> but it was great. We had 80 carers there. We had somebody who sang for the whole afternoon, well, for a couple of hours. And that's all that carers needed. Um, they chose the name, so they were instrumental. I was just called the respite scheme. Um, we've got somebody to look at names. I had your time. The carers came back and said, no, Hazel, it's about us. It should be called my time. So it's called my time. Um, the, Every day is just, I, I, I can see the enthusiasm here, I wish I could put it down here, just going, it's just something very, very simple. But although it's simple, don't get me wrong, it takes an awful lot of work to work with the recipient or the people who give the offers. Um, carers, how do they access it? They're all known to the carers centre, um, because once we had subject phoning up and said, is this when I book my tickets for Shalimar and then my overnight accommodation? Now that wasn't the case because we had something to do with the teachers. So all the carers that go on the trips are known to the carers centre. You don't necessarily have to have a carers assessment because we've also got a health and wellbeing project. But we hope if you haven't, but the fact that they're actually getting something, then they'll come to realise a carers assessment is there to support them. 
but sometimes the assessment process can be quite intimidating and there should be different doors to get into your assessment. So they can come in and they can say, I'm interested. We've got a website, mytime for number four carers.co.uk. We put up um, we put up all the offers so carers can go on there, but we also understand that carers don't always have access. So when they um they sign up, we say, What what are you interested in? So we do all the legwork and phone them up saying this is come in, are you interested in this? It's something that we want to get. That was well done there. I have to pat myself on the back. I really, I've clicked that and for the first time it worked on the first click. Um, <laughs> um, we want to really replicate this up and down the country because we want carers to be talking to other carers and going, have you heard of my time? Have you got this? It's such a simple, simple concept. And it's like going into the brand. You could say it's like trying to develop a franchise for it. But if you go onto the website and look at mytimeforcarers.co.uk, you can see the overall layout. And what we would like to do is, say there was carers from London or carers from Newcastle, we would have a page dedicated to that area. So they would click on that page and they would see the offers available for them. But they all would come under the My Time brand. I mean, a lot of the hoteliers have actually said, we've got links in different areas. We've actually just taken, taken on board um, a hotel in Birmingham. Now, the logistics of that is a nightmare, but we've actually managed to get kids down there. We would like to set it up down there, but we had a hotel came to us and said, can we get involved? So we've said yes. It's something about linking together. It's like that jigsaw you can see up on the screen. It's all the pieces together. It's putting down the barriers, because very often people sit with the barriers and say, this is what we do for carers. This is what we do. My time is about lowering these barriers and trying to say, this is what we could do across the country. In the first year, the offers we were bringing in was like over £90,000, you know, and we had a grant from the lottery for forty-five. So you're doubling it, you know, we're, at, we're on the final year of our funding, which is another thing, but I'm, I'm staying positive. Um, but it's just like saying, this is something very, very simple, but it came from carers themselves, and that's what makes the big difference. How does that sound? Okay, Hazel, thanks very much indeed. And uh, yeah, Iris um, staying there, I was still um, doing what she can to provide information linkages for you both to the My Time uh, website there and also to the resources list on the Sky Guidance, or Sky website as, as well. And uh, James here, you may have seen, is saying, uh, yes, he'll do what he can to get these links. One of you has requested that these links are sent out with the with the slides um, and, the, um, and, and, and the audio. So we're going to do our best um, to do that. So yes, yeah, so have a look at what your, uh, say, comments from Nikki there about um, yeah, because what's happening, which is great, you're, you're giving information, advice and insights to each other as, as, as well. Um, um, talking about social value then, how that's demonstrated, along with peer pressure between organisations. Um, have you got questions for, for Hazel now, or indeed for uh, um, Debbie um, and Ros? It's now just turned 20 past, we can go for quite a bit longer yet if we need to, so come on, get them, get them, get them fire, it, uh, fire it in. We've shocked them all, haven't we? We've shocked them, We've shocked them all, all into. Um, but some very appreciative comments about what's happening in Liverpool there, Hazel. So that's great. You know, you've been um, pressuring away on this for years, haven't you, really? So it's great to see it coming to fruition. Yeah, and, and again, demonstrated. I mean, we were just doing it, but we couldn't do it without the hotels and without the theatres and, and, and see yeah. the private sector. And it is is yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see one a question there about the Carers Innovation Fund, and I don't think it's it's not a it's Engl it's in England only. So I think the key is about linking up with somebody. Probably that's your best bet there. I think. Okay. Um, Ross, I don't want to put you on the spot on this. Story. Remember that sort of comment you're making during your own uh, presentation about um, about getting kind of you know cross governmental kind of in support behind. Uh, <coughs> Care. Do you want to say anything about that at all beyond DHSC? Well, I think the, the, the two things that I, I think we're particularly interested in is around young carers and about um, some schools seem to be what we hear are very supportive, but some schools it's, you know, again, it could be often to do with the workload that the leadership of the schools coping with, so it's not a criticism of the schools. 
but um, I think there's a lot we need to do around um, young carers and then we've got somebody great working with us around getting employment opportunities for young carers so that what I worry about is people um, kind of almost having their because of what's happened in their early life that they're kind of lost to the system so we sort of want to make sure that they get the support they need um, early earlier I think um, so I think it's kind of employment and educate those those areas employment seems quite a big one that we're, we're talking about at the moment with them. Yeah, thank you. For that. There's a specific question for Hazel. Do you receive care break funding there from Jackie? Yeah, I saw two there. I saw Jackie's and then I saw Ron's one further up. Okay, um, yeah. Jackie's, it. no, we don't receive care break funding. Um, the only funding we've got is from the lottery just now. So as I say, we started it on no money whatsoever. Um, Ron, does my <coughs> time cater for just adult carers or does it cater for young carers? And parent carers as well. Primarily it's for adult carers and young adult carers as well. However, we do have events that are actually catered, catered, catered towards families like the CBBs last year had a big event and we could take the children there um, and some of the, the theatres are geared towards children as well and sometimes if you're caring for a family member, say you're caring for mum, it's good for dad and his other children to go to an event and although they might not be the primary care, they're still being affected by the impact of caring in the family. So they're still young carers, although they might not be the primary carer, and we have lots of events like that. So it's very, very flexible. Right. Hope that right. answers your question, Ron. There's that very specific one from Esther there. I'm interested in how people access a respite. So when they want to attend some of the events that you've mentioned, do you know about? How they get respite in order to be able to do that. Well, strangely enough, that has never been an issue. Right. Because that was something that we always thought would be an issue. Um, and at Local Solutions, we do have a domiciliary care, so we always thought that's our backup, that we can link into it. We've never had to use that. Um, for the hotels, we use a Sunday night because Sunday night, and that's from the hotels themselves, because that tends to be the quieter night. So that tends to also be the night that the carer can usually get somebody to sit with the person because they're not in work and they're not. Mm. So it's never, that bit's never been an issue. And if it's during the day, we vary the times of events. So we'll have some events in the evening, or some in the morning, so people can get around and go to some events. But we try and make sure um, that the everybody who's on my time has at least two opportunities per year. And I have to say, it's not been an issue for us. Okay. Not to say that it's not, but I'm just saying that's the evidence we've got so far. Okay. Um, there's some information from, from Iris there, which of course is uh, publicly available, but a reminder that the Innovation Fund, we're seeking to provide seed funding to a portfolio of concept testing projects from organisations from a mix of sectors, including involved in community sector, small and medium <coughs> enterprises, commercial sector, etc. So it really is, you know, wide open. You're looking for innovation, ideas, initiatives. Um, and of course, I know the Department of Health and Social Care are very keen on, uh, you know, identifying good things that are happening, scaling, spreading, and so on, really. Um, so uh, there's a real opportunity here. Thanks to Iris. And Iris has provided the actual Innovation Fund link there. Okay. Um, right. Uh, more, more comments, more questions. We've probably missed some of them as we've been sort of focusing on the presentations and so on. Um, let's. Uh, Bev, you're typing on what you're going to type. I guess innovation fund will not be applicable. Maybe. Yeah. All right. That's just Oh, what did you say there? Something you yeah, I, I, I threw that. So, in how do you, who do you approach yeah. in the hotels? Mm. Well, as I said, the very, very first person, um, it was by chance. I sent five letters out to the five biggest hotels in Liverpool, and I got in front of the general manager there. There are then there's hotels associations. Um, and it's amazing how many people move from one hotel to the other. It's the general manager. Um, and 
every day at some point I would have to say, they say that the statistics are small and that, but I would say at some point every has a caring role, whether they know it or not. Yeah. But if you talk to somebody, then they'll say, oh, I remember my mum caring for my granny. So when you get in front of somebody, then they'll say, oh, I remember that. So they can understand that completely. You know, so um, it's usually the general manager and you're not asking for money. You're asking for a quiet thing. The turnaround of a room, it's very little in comparison to what the feedback they get from the carers, but we make sure they don't book directly with hotels, they book directly with us, so we try and take that away from the hotels. They're, we're booking with them saying, have you got a room? They can say to me, no, I can't do this Sunday, but I can give you this other night. We don't have to say it to the carer, and that makes a massive mm -hmm. difference. And I also don't do it when there's things like local football matches on, um, or there's some big event on maybe at Liverpool Arena. So we've got that understanding, that's the time consuming bit and that's the bit that makes it work. But that's the bit that you've got to spend the time on. Hope that's okay. helpful. Um, James, is, Bev, you were referring us to your earlier question and it's, uh, it's there about the cost to roll out. The cost to roll out, oh yes. Well, the sky's the limit. Depends on what you. I mean, I've got what what we've got in Liverpool for one and a half staff, and I would like to roll that out throughout. And now we're at full capacity in Liverpool, so you're talking maybe 60, 70 plus thousand, um, maybe per area to do not roughly what we've got in Liverpool. But it's for the amount of money you're putting in, for the amount that's coming back, it's a no-brainer really. It just it works. Okay, and a couple more that we are peppering you with questions now, Hazel. Oh. There's from Jill there. Hazel, is there a toolkit being developed to help organisations um, roll my time out? Yes, there is. Because, um, and I've been up and down the country and been down to um, London as well, trying to get other areas to take this on board because I say we want to have it something like a franchise and either we would manage at a distance because we have got a lot of experience at managing projects at a distance and we've even got some projects in Wales and things. So we can do that, but the other option is to use a toolkit and then people buy into the toolkit and buy mm -hmm. into um, the website so then they would get their own page, dedicated page, and then they would run it. So it depends on what area. If they wanted to do all the the leg work and do all the hotels, they could do that at a smaller cost, but if they wanted us to get more involved, then it would be at a larger cost. But in answer to the very brief question, yes there is a toolkit being being um and developed. Was asking how many carers are I suppose known to be linked with your schemes and so on from Bev there. I'm Let me just redo um, that you see that about a third way down the screen there. How many, how many keras? And then Iris has answered that. Um, oh, just a minute, Iris. Uh, the irrepressible Iris. <laughs> yes, come from yet thank again. you, Iris. You're on good form today, Iris, aren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. 1,300 carers are now registered with my time. But we're probably getting an average, or oh, do you know what? The, 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 so because we've got the development workers and we're doing the assessments, we're getting new carers all the time and it's getting harder and harder because but we've now got volunteers who are carers themselves who've got that empathy who've got that understanding but it's just growing and growing okay and here's a hard one from sarah would you say this is based on the similar scheme shared care scotland well actually i've been up to see shared care um in scotland as the well the accent's a giveaway agent <sighs> <laughs> yes, it's even with this croaky voice. Even with the croaky Yes, um, right. it's slightly different um, right. because there's based more rurally, because anybody knows Scotland, there's more rural settings, so a lot of theirs is maybe like uh, holiday caravans or and it's smaller things, but yes, but the diversity of what we offer, um, and I think we've got sign ups more, but it is very similar, yes. There is a bit of a cro not a crossover, but we work comp uh, together. Right. There's been an exchange between Vanessa and Nikki. Vanessa saying if a care doesn't, if a care, if a care doesn't have any family, friend to support, to sit with a cared for person, would this be funded by the local authority in order for carers to have the break? And then Nikki further down, four comments further down, says Vanessa, my thinking is if it's an eligible need, then we would provide the care for cared for for the cared for person. On a cared for plan, slightly harder if no eligible need. Can you, can you comment on that, Tom? Well, certainly in, in Liverpool as well, if it's during the day, sometimes you can use carers' vouchers. Right. Now, that's a whole different ballgame. But you can use it during the day so that somebody's actually coming in to release the carers so they can go and do that. 
Um, and on very, very rare occasions, we've made a memory. So the carer and the care for, that there might be dementia-friendly performances at theatres, so they can take the person that they care for as well. But as Isaac says, it's important that they get time away from each other. You can love the person, but you just need that. We all need space from people, so it, it is important. So primarily, it's for the carers. Yeah, and um, that was one of Isaac's points, wasn't it, right at the start? Yes. Actually, the, the, the person with care support needs, needs a break from the carer. And they so might want a break from the carer. Absolutely. They might be fed up with them, saying, absolutely. do you want this, have you got this, have you got this? So they need yeah. time for themselves as well. Yeah. And there's Ron saying that uh, Carers UK have just published their state of caring report, recommending the increase in ring fencing for funding carer breaks. It's been the recommendation two years running. Will we ever see ring fencing make a comeback for carers? Um, so I don't know what the official line to take is, but my assessment is probably not. So I think ring fencing is yeah. something we get asked a lot about on a lot of areas and we also get asked could we leave more discretion for people to spend their local allocation as they see fit so i'm just you know i i think we need to find ways i think that's why getting the return on investment data is so important we need to find ways to make it really easy for all of you to be making that case to 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 your top team and for us to be working from our level to talking to top teams about carers' breaks. And uh, as I say, the local government association has a very similar philosophy that uh, it, it really is for you know, localities to seek to prioritise in locally appropriate ways and of course utilise you know, way beyond um, um, streams of money. It's, it's about how they galvanise people and communities and, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, okay. Um, Right, and Iris has actually given you a link to the state, that state of caring report we just referred to. Um, right, are we, um, has anybody else got anything that they would like to, uh, to, 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 to say? Um, Ron um, and Iris, okay, we'll just let that come through, then I think we'll probably draw this to a close. Okay, Ron's just thanking the speech. Well, hey Ron, you. that was going to be my <laughs> line, don't you, don't you nick my uh, best lines. Okay. Um, multiple attendees are now talking, but while they, while, while they do, I'll offer my thank yous as well um, to Roz and Debbie and Hazel and to the invisible James as well, who was waving to you all. Um, um, and of course, most of all, importantly, to yourselves. You've made some good links with each other, I think, that hopefully you'll be able to uh, uh, share information, ideas and understandings um, after this. Um, after this webinar and, and you'll be given the information you have all each other's email addresses and so on um, so and, and Iris thanks to you for all the support during this process um, uh, as, uh, as well uh, again you know do use do access and use the uh, resource and toolkit that are now uh, online and uh, available and um, uh, indeed it's been a, a really good session so um, thank you all very much indeed over now, Elvis has just left the building. <laughs> <laughs>